His Excellency the Prime Minister never said government has taken or is contemplating to take a decision to regulate the media in the country. That did not happen in the meeting which he held with the editors. We saw the leaks that the Prime Minister is coming wielding a big makundu against mm. uh, the media, if we were to put it that way. Uh, I honestly don't believe that is the intention of the Honourable Prime Minister. They did not go to court or uh, have been found uh, guilty for political matters. They've been convicted for what was alleged and proven by the persecutors. I don't know where they get this assumption that uh, there, is, there, is, there, is a, there is need to be change in the politics of this country. Because that's where the problem come, uh, begins. Mm -hmm. You have already assumed that uh, people wants political change. Zvusele Mguni, siyabonga kutsi sihambe sifike lambabane hospital hill ema hovisi na hulumende. Some of us are coming here for the first time. Um, uh, one question uh, probably we ask ourselves before the public, why did you allow yourselves to speak to us, Mubatine? Uh, I would imagine you consider us very hostile to the government. Why did you allow the bridge to interview you and even give you the courtesy of bringing us to your offices? Uh, there is a season for every everything under the sun. Okay. <laughs> this country is emerging from a difficult political situation. Mm -hmm. uh, we came here when we occupied this office and this position, mm -hmm. uh, and we contended with a lot of things. Okay. Having said that, uh, when I came to this office, the political uh, uh, situation in the country and obtaining everywhere else was uh, hostile to almost everybody. And uh, most people, as a result, even concluded that I'm being militant, uh, I'm being aggressive. Uh, it was the detects of the situations and circumstances that were prevailing at the time when we came to this office. For the fact that everybody can see that uh, there has been now a massive change of the environment, politically and otherwise, this is a time we should now be toning down our languages, uh, begin to uh, see genuinely what is embedded and buried in our brains in terms of building the future of this country. Uh, it is not about being afraid uh, to be criticized. Neither is it being afraid at, uh, uh, to, be, to, to talk to everybody that has got an interest to talk to. This is one office that should be readily available to engage anyone, especially anybody who comes from the media space. Mm -hmm. uh, there is no exclu exclusivity with this office. It's a public office. Mm -hmm. uh, we will continue to talk to anyone, especially people who have proven that uh, they are being critical of what government does. And in their critique and criticism, there are no traces uh, that uh, indicates uh, the breaking of law the notices that indicates undermining the legitimacy of the government or even engaging terroristic activities and tactics to communicate their message. So there is no reason to run away from everyone or, or anybody for that matter who want to engage in that front. So, would, uh, I mean, I've had people who say you are very arrogant, you are brash when you engage with the media or the public. Are you suggesting that was an act? Uh, at the time to to deal with the, the particular circumstances you are describing, or really this is just a misunderstanding of the your personality? The voice of propaganda, <laughs> propaganda is anywhere, should not dissipate. Because uh, when you are a mouthpiece of a government or an institution, mm -hmm. especially an institution that have all of a sudden mm -hmm. come under onslaught and attack, you've mm -hmm. got to go in there and do exactly what I did. <laughs> it was all calculated, it was all uh, estimated, and uh, I would tell you as I do now, um, it's not arrogance, it was all confidence. You could not have done what has been done in this country since I arrived in this office if you did not come with an attitude of confidence. So you and call it confidence instead correct, of arrogance. Correct, <laughs> because that's what people miss Mm -hmm. When you engage people on contentious uh, political ideas and in the contentious political space, 
they always will mistook and misconstrue you for arrogance. Okay. But it is not arrogance. Uh, it is also inherent uh, uh, to this particular and kind of job that I'm doing, that you always deal with contentious ideas. You always deal with contentious opinions. You counter, you confront. Mm -hmm. And as you do that, some people are not used to confrontation. Uh, they think when you confront their ideas, uh, you are fighting them. Mm -hmm. That is not the, that is not the true position. But would uh, would someone who runs? Okay, let me put it like this: There are some of the traditional media that you deal with in the country, and there is now the emergence of online spaces where we operate. Would uh, a person who's running a Facebook page, whatever that he calls media, on the online space, would you engage in this kind of conversation with them as well, and including those that you have described as terrorist uh, uh, entities, or at least in, uh, inclined in that direction? Obviously, we would not, because there is a specific reason why government. Uh, published the notice of some certain and specified certain entities as terrorists. Mm -hmm. Part of them, of course, was to deny them the leverage to access government official uh, information from official sources. They are continuing to publish it today because we are living in a world of leaking uh, information. We are living in a world of selling information. Media houses, it's, a, it's, a, it's, 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 it's an open secret. They pay for information. They send monies to people to traffic their information, government information. To them it is happening. But we believe as government that you cannot lend credency to institutions that are, are believing in cohesion, in intimidation, in terrorism, uh, to communicate their language. So I cannot do that if I, 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 you, you are one of those organizations or entities that have been classified as government as such. I'm talking to the bridge, I'm talking to you, and I'm talking to everyone online who is available and interested to engage because they, they are not classified as terrorist entities. So that is the only difference between that particular one which you have in the back of your mind mm. and the rest of the other. But, uh, I mean... Seated here and looking at government uh, approach, that one, you were taking some of these media houses to court in South Africa uh, and you were communicating with them, having classified them for a long time. You were responding, you were doing all sorts of things, treating them like any other media. On the other hand, you were, you were saying they are uh, terrorist entities, which was kind of odd. But it's even worse now that they seemingly disconnect between your office and the office of the king's office, in particular, Babem mm -hmm. Smelan. He continues to engage with that uh, institution, Particular but you are, what, what communicating messages are you sending to the public with regards to the synergy of messaging between these two I don't want to talk on behalf of the king's office. Mm -hmm. Neither do I want to uh, talk on behalf of uh, the director of communications there, Mr. Percy Smelan. You will find time and engage them with the same question. I can only talk for the office that I'm working in. So again, this is what I want to quickly uh, uh, put to you. Uh, don't take King's Office employees as individuals as the King's Office. Okay. Neither should you take the King's Office as being those individuals. There is a huge difference. There is a known position of the King's Office in respect to this particular entity we are talking about. As to what convenience the, the, the individuals at the king's office has found suitable for them to continue to engage this particular entity, that is not going to affect or influence me in any way in the light of so long as the notice that was made by government here is still standing. Unless and until uh, His Excellency the Prime Minister, the incumbent, rescind that decision and uh, 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 the prescription, prescription of this particular entity. Then we can then have the leeway again to engage with them 
on official capacity. But T till then, it is not going to happen. But let's ask you. Let, let, let's remove the issues uh, of uh, terrorists and non-terrorists. How do you determine, as a government, this is a media entity we can engage with in the online space? Because uh, to use what you tell our can I come now as Mangoba News and engage you as a media house? And also just. Just the two questions, please answer them mm. together. You've also spoken about media regulation, and I think it's a conversation that's mostly quote relevant. unquote relevant to the to mm. the traditional media. Mm. How are you going to deal with online media? This is the position. Uh, let me first correct what is uh, being perpetrated out there. His Excellency, the Prime Minister, never said government has taken or is contemplating to take a decision to regulate the media in the country. That did not happen in the meeting which he held with the editors, uh, to which I was part of. In fact, I facilitated that meeting. Um, His Excellency engaged with the editors uh, on a very common and uh, a, 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 a reciprocal uh, understanding, to the point that by the time the meeting closed, there were even projects that were touted by the editors' forum where they will work together with government. One of those projects was to put in place a concept paper with a view to celebrate uh, the 20th anniversary of our national constitution. It did not come from government, it came from the editors. That is just to show how candid, how robust and how open those discussions was. The concern with His Excellency Express was simple and straightforward. There is a need for the media to regulate in this country. And the whole uh, idea has been that let the media self-regulate. Because if the media does not do so on their own, it, or, and in their own terms, government will be forced at some point to take measures to regulate the media in the country. And he mentioned, His Excellency, very specific uh, concerns in the absence of the regulation, a regulatory mechanism for the media. Uh, the salary scales for the media practitioners in the country, mm. the training that is that that, that has, has has gone or is not going to uh, is being is, is, be, is being done to media practitioners in, in the country. So even the quality of the 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 the, 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 the news that mm. we are being fed in this country. Uh, is not to the standard which, at least according to the expectation of the Prime Minister, is at. And it was a cordial conversation to the point that the media also raised their concern that uh, Your Excellency don't conveniently forget mm. that the, these practitioners we employ as media houses, they come from government institutions. You train them here at the Limco mm. Queen, mm. you train them at the University of the Swatini. So whatever that you cook in that pot, it That's means you also have a responsibility mm. to look into it because that that is what we can use, mm. what is only available. Mm. So as a result, we agreed that this is going to be a collective undertaking. Mm. There is a responsibility that is on the part of government. There is a res responsibility that is on the part of the media. Mm. Uh, and then after that meeting, we saw the leaks that the prime minister is coming, wielding a big makundu against mm. uh, the media, if we were to put it that way. Uh, I honestly don't believe that is the intention of the Honourable Prime Minister. And I honestly don't believe that's the message the Which media should be getting from this. So are you confirming today that the issue of state regulation is not on the agenda of mm, government? Absolutely, absolutely not. Okay. It will never be on the agenda until and unless it is clear that the media continues to stagnate mm. in terms of self-regulating. Okay. So, so, so part of the self-regulatory uh, mechanism we are canvassing answers your second question. Mm. How do you deal with these podcasts, mm. uh, the bridge tomorrow to be Alfios when I leave this office, maybe mm. I will start my own. Mm. And then, you, you know, the, it's, it's a very contentious space and it is easy to uh, populate that space in the name of uh, freedom of expression, the right for uh, the right of the media, and so on and so forth. Mm. Uh, we are also looking towards the media to assist government in that respect. Mm -hmm. How can we regulate even this social media space? Because it's happening in other countries. Actually, mm. in Singapore, they have uh, what they call an online code of conduct 
and ethics uh, uh, law. They apply it. Mm. They che- you, you were watching in America very recent congressional committee interrogating this big face mm, uh, uh, online uh, uh, online mm. uh, uh, giants uh, uh, WhatsApp uh, uh, the owner who even was given a microphone mm. to po- apologize to the American public mm-hmm. for some of what the online media space have published and had in society mm-hmm. uh, in America. You are touching on, on, on TikTok. Mm-hmm. America regulate, regulates media mm-hmm. to the point that TikTok have not been given an option. They have been told loud and clear, you sell or you shut down. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's, a, that's a heavy-handedness mm-hmm. uh, from the part of government and it comes from well-developed uh, 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 democracies of the world. But here in, a, in the kingdom of Eswatini, we are saying we don't want to get there, especially because if you read the, the, the constitution uh, in, in, in that provision, it gives uh, the spirit and understanding that uh, and it embraces the fact that it should be the media that does this for themselves uh, so that they can work freely Mm-hmm. Uh, with government. No, it's nice that you say that, Mgune, and uh, to be honest, to be fair to the government, because it has taken time for the media to regulate, Correct. having given them so much time. But also someone will very well argue that the conversation around media regulation is funny because you've just said right now, you spoke with the media and there was a suggestion that there must be 20-year celebration of the constitution. Uh, would it be fair for me to say it's precisely because we've captured the media? Uh, we've had, for example, some editors from editor from independent newspapers. They are part of government in some capacities and institutions. They go with the institutions of the head of state or the government. They report favorably for the government. Uh, you have not allowed radio to be owned independently. You controlled tightly Swaziland television and everyone. So really, you really don't need regulation. You've already regulated through underhand tactics. And therefore, the online space is where people can finally ventilate. What would be your comment to someone who says that? I don't know when have you last listened to radio or even watch our local TV stations. There is absolutely no self censorsness there or imposed censorship. <laughs> or that, that space that space is open. Okay, and, well, but uh, and, 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 MPs are allowed, for example. So the last time the MPs who are ordinarily saying they're part of the system but they're not allowed to even go to to the to to the radio to converse whatever they say. There, there are context. no robust uh, there conversations. A, there was a there. context to that decision that was taken by the government of that time. Mm-hmm. It's important to interrogate the context of that time. What had happened that had uh, forced the government of the day to take that kind of decision? There was a that there was a context to it. Uh, for instance. Uh, you will remember and recall very well that at that particular time there was a huge clash of responsibilities between Induna and Gunza and a member of parliament to the extent that it was a con- it was a confused atmosphere even in terms of who has got the right to call a in, a meeting of Ngunza. Mm-hmm. So there was that confusion which I believe His Excellency the late. Uh, mm-hmm. former Prime Minister Panabas Jamin was trying to address. Mm-hmm. And I think he addressed it effectively by that art decision which he took. Because from that time, it is now known and clear that when a member of parliament, a member of parliament was elected to go and legislate. But when it comes to administrative matters of Ngunla, that is being handled by Induna Ngunla together with the member of parliament. The member of parliament goes to Induna Ngunla, engage Induna Ngunla, Induna Ngunda summons the community. Induna Ngunda makes the announcements. Mm. So I think it, it's, it's a decision that was taken in that context. And from where I am seated today, and I was seated then, I thought it was a, 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 a positive. Has that been lifted now? Because I remember even... Lifted the, for who? For ordinary MPs and for public. To do what? That's, that's, that's exactly what I'm trying to, 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 but maybe to, 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 correct, to correct to you. Maybe let me clarify my question. My okay. question is here. There are public MPs. They want to engage on national discourse on any issue. Correct. Uh, it doesn't have to be issues related to Ingunla. Okay. They want to engage uh, on matters of national importance. Are they, their forum they've uh, been given to them is not enough? 
but they, they they should be able to get rid of let's let's remove the MPs but I thought that would be easier yeah. for you but here is snatch for mm. example here is civil mm. society that is, is allowed and is operating the kind they don't have access to radio they don't have access to Swazi TV what are you sure say? about that I w- I watch <laughs> them on news Mgun, every day those organizations okay yes I listen them being covered uh, broadly by the, the 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 radio and so on and so forth. Uh, the media is, is, is splashing news from them every single day. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. uh, so I, I think I think maybe at some point a, a, an atmosphere uh, uh, like that did exist, but I think really now the space have opened. Okay. Part of why the space have opened is exactly what you are saying, that there is now the social media that have opened up and is giving space to talk and to write to engage to almost everybody. Mm. So when you say, yeah, you can talk uh, anywhere else but not here, uh, it doesn't really mm. uh, achieve the goal of what you may have in mind. Mm. Because people, as you know correctly, they are correctly, engaging. They're engaging. Mm. People mm. are talking, people are, are, are exchanging ideas about what they feel and what they, they, they think uh, the government should do. Mm. We are even surprised the way they would uh, invade and flood government pa- social media pages, and they would say anything. They would say anything. You don't block them. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> we, we, we don't block them. Mm. They would say anything about the government uh, p- spokesperson in his personal capacity, far away from his uh, uh, mm. uh, uh, official, uh, uh, capacity. official capacity. Mm. And you could see uh, Maswat have opened up. Uh, Maswat are not scared. Uh, Maswat are, are talking everything that they want. Mm. So I really don't think... Um, uh, uh, the, the media space in this country is is captured. Mm. Uh, me, me, media personnel can can go with the head of state, as you alluded to that uh, mm. question earlier on. Uh, but again, we've got to be sure of what you are saying about them. Are you sure that their responsibility is actually to report about what the head of state does? And what do they report? Where can you draw a line where you will say, no, this is being biased? Because a, med- a head of state external trips are widely covered Every. by the same media. Every port, whether you are in a certain, his measures, his own estate, working visit to whatever country, that thing will be published from the time it departs Scooper International Airport until he, 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 he boats the plane from that particular country coming back home. So everything is clearly open in the eyes of the public today. Mm-hmm. There is absolutely no way you can play with the minds or try to hide some information yeah. uh, from the public. I want to come back, Mgunu, to what you said. And I like that you used the words, was was calm, let down. there was a difficult period we had to deal with. Right. We were very oppressive even the way we were engaging each other. Things have calmed down. So uh, rightly so, um, uh, as some would say, is it now therefore not time for us to engage on the things that made us to conflict in the very first place. Because it seems like we swept most of these things that are the carpet. We just are pretending things are normal. Now that we've calmed down, are we willing to say, uh, A, B, and C, in Kalangan, can we talk? Uh, uh, and also, look, you may have offended me in Endlia, Loendangayo, A, B, and C, but maybe now I've kind of cooled down. I may be willing. And I will be specific here to the MPs that are arrested, to the MPs that are out in exile, and even those ordinary resources who are exiled. Is government willing to engage them, at whatever capacity, to engage them in the very least with the same tone you are saying? They would say, no, things that they calm it down, mm. we are willing to engage differently. Mm. I, cannot, I cannot predict what the future holds mm. for the country mm-hmm. because I would also want to say to you, uh, you cannot speak like as if Eswatini uh, today is ex- existing for the last day. We, there is a future for this country. We don't know what political dimensions are yet to, uh, to, 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 to manifest as we progress towards uh, the near and the distant future. Uh, but I differ with you on one score when you say we have swept some of these issues under the carpet. No. We did not do so. That's why today I'm talking to the bridge. That's why we had our national dialogue during the Sibaya. Sibaya was earmarked and get to exactly achieve that. Let people bet, but never up. 
Nam Ralay Nanjing Funaglish or Lam Nyev, Nangal Tolal Tubaleglish or Nyev. And having concluded that process of the National Dialogue as Bayern, doesn't necessarily mean that this country does not have other forums today which can still engage with issues like Bonagala Gutsi, they are of national interest or they may be a hindrance to national development or even to the coexistence and peaceful coexistence of Maswati as a nation. Yeah. Uh, you have to, uh, they, are, they are speaking, they are talking, they are doing the rest. Uh, on the question of MPs who are some are in exile, as you put it, uh, some are, those are those are, those are matters that are, are, are now uh, in the precincts uh, 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 of the courts. They, but can they, we they find can a political solution, um, Goni, uh, initiated by people like yourselves in Bafundi and your people who have seen the other side also, just a political solution to deal with the issue, Lise Ngandolo, for example, because it's clear that that legal process is going to only continue what we are still dealing with. Is it possible for us to find a political solution to the MPs in jail and also those who have come That is exactly where I think you missed the point. Mm -hmm. Uh, w once a matter is in court, it's a, legal, <laughs> it's a legal question and a legal matter. It is not a political matter. They did not go to court or uh, have been found uh, guilty for political matters. They've been convicted for what was alleged and proven by the persecutors that they are liable. This is what they did. They broke the law. So for me and for this government where I'm seated, I don't really think we have any pressure to uh, 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 go outside the constitutionally provided institutions and structures to deal and handle with political matters. We don't have a crisis that cannot be addressed by our institutions. That is why when we said to the nation, come to Espanya and engage, people decided conveniently, as they used to do in the past, to use their right to stay away. And you cannot put the responsibility to engage on one party when you are really serious about engagement. But the engagement is a two-party uh, situation. You have people who really believe they've got political, genuine political uh, issues and matters of concern. But each time the forum is afforded to them to engage with those issues, instead of even taking that forum to say, no, 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 we are here, but we don't believe this forum will yield the desired solutions that we are looking for. We are therefore uh, requesting for a further forum beyond this forum. It has happened in the past, no man. You have a question which you fight me, would see what caused me to change from one camp, political camp. I'm, I, I hope your time will still permit me to yeah, come in. But to. I'm, I'm not answering it for now. Yeah. What I'm saying is in the past, we had had those opportunities. We have engaged even beyond the spire itself. That's where we came up with commissions which then took the matters which were being convinced as by any uh, to the people beyond the, 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 the spire itself because it was decided and concluded then that spire will not afford us the leverage that we need in terms of time and in terms of exhausting the issues but that we're supposed to deal with. No, fair, fair point to you, Mgoni. But also the point that others are ask, uh, asking is that we've been doing Sibaya for years. Remember, dialogue didn't start just with the spy. We've had Sibaya for years. We've had smart dialogues. We've had uh, Tinkundlen, where we used to speak prior to coming of the constitution. All those have not yielded a desired need for political change. And others even go to the extent of arguing, when we engage genuinely as stakeholders and in the way that we can even agree, one, what is going to be the agenda of that conversation? <laughs> Who is going to be in that table? How are we going to mediate when there is a conflict? Now, if we cannot even agree there, these mm -hmm. things need to be agreed before the dialogue. And in this case, the dialogue has taken place and we have not agreed on who comes, what are the terms of the engagements and all of that. So would you blame someone who says we've been doing this for years and it has never yielded what we want, therefore we boycott it? No, the problem which you, you, you I'm happy you are correctly flagging, that's a common problem, especially with the people <laughs> who normally don't engage as by it. I don't know where they get this assumption that uh, 
there is, there, is, there, is a, there is need to be change in the politics of this country. Because that's where the problem come, uh, begins. Mm -hmm. You have already assumed that uh, people want political change. Uh, now, since people want political change, uh, you even assumed in order to achieve that political change, this is the modality of the dialogue which should should unfold. That is where I think we miss the point. Aksu mm -hmm. uh, Maswati who are looking for in a top of some political change or whatever uh, the case may be. And that space is a very contentious space. And the breaking ground of that space is the People's Parliament. Sibaya, we know where we come from, Nesbaya. Mm -hmm. We know what Sibaya have achieved. Mm -hmm. Things that we, at the time when we were politicking about them, we would not imagine on even our wildest dream that Tingunda will agree to have a written constitution. Mm. That Tingunda will agree to uh, 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 have direct, direct parliamentary elections. Mm -hmm. That Tingunda will agree to immigrate from the so called la advisory council to Labatsala, faces Labatsala, mm. to very regulated functioning in the open. A royal council members. Mm. So, if you so have seen some progress, we have well. seen some progress. Okay. Okay. So, it's not true that Sba did not yield anything, mm -hmm. uh, it's an attitude. And uh, probably, as we continue to engage, we will be able to break that memory of that attitude to mm. say there is nothing good that can come out of Sba mm. because. So many good things have come out of Sibaya. So maybe it takes us seamlessly to this thing that we always say, eh, watch you, eh, my comrades, mm. umzabalaz, bo part of umzabalaz. Maybe uh, now that you say that, because I'm sure you are talking from experience, Correct. having seen the evolution. Um, is it true, first of all, that you were once with the progressive? And if I recall very well, there was a movement that you, you led. People get ready. Pe people get ready. Mm. Uh, maybe you can give us that brief history, just to clarify once and for all, because I saw in one of our online uh, uh, invitation for people to comment. They were saying you're a member of Podem. Correct. If I recall, you're a member of NLC instead. That's right. Uh, so uh, maybe you can clarify once and yeah. for all. No, you have already given this particular clari clarity. Never I was a member of Podem or Swayoko because mm -hmm. that's what they were saying. Good, I was a member. Also, it had never happened. Yeah, I think that I uh, know. As well. I have always been a member of uh, NLC. Always been. Always been. Oh, okay. And <laughs> NLC, yes. And NLC, if you were to look at uh, most people who came and participated in, in this government, even at the level of deputy prime minister. Oh, yes, the others one, been, the other cause, and the Albert Chabano. Yes, you can yeah, name yeah. them. There are so many of them. <laughs> uh, why? Because the philosophy of the NNSC, I'm not talking about your NNSC. Yeah, the, <laughs> I'm talking well, about the NNSC that yeah. we know, mm. was, was to believe strongly in participation. Mm. The, we, we had a cardinal a political philosophy that says you can't relegate yourself from playing the game. Hence, Obed even became Hence prime minister. Hence, Obed became even the prime minister of the kingdom. Mm. Now, coming back directly to my question, Babi Masego Tulane, many people believe, but they say Tulane was my political antagonist. Never. Umang Fiyalo Mseveni Tulane Masego was the first person to say, hey! You know, because of that background, we have worked um, in the past together, mm. especially during the time of conversing the national constitution. Mm. We, people get ready, was hosting workshops because it was a parachurch organization. It was not a political party. Mm. So it was easy for me to use that organization to o o o conduct workshops all over the country. To prepare to, people to prepare for Maswati, yes, yeah. to prepare Maswati, because it's the in the constitution, the Kunyangayo, Nasek Figile, what kind of contribution uh, uh, they can make to 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 make sure we submit submitting substance. Mm. But the constitution is a technical thing, so if you don't prepare people for it, uh, you may have people sitting and listening, but they will assist you with no content. But would someone um, go and say, uh, you've sold then to the, the NNLC, because the NNLC itself has taken resolution in recent years that says, we don't participate in this government, we don't agree with the government, and then now you are the face That's of that. That's why term. I'm saying to you, your NNLC. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Your NNLC have taken those resolutions. The NNLC, of yesteryears. which oh, yesteryears we were members of, 
they believed in participation. We, we have already, you have already uh, even listed people who mm. were part of government. Mm. It was not so. The trick, the whole trick for me and many others, including trade unionists who are very vocal in this country, mm. Boba Bechani told and many others, who were participating. Botemba Msi, who mm. were participating. We were participating. The only organization that stood and said from the onset, our policy is non-participation, is Putemo to date. Mm. That's been a cardinal position of Putemo. They boycott, they don't participate on anything. Mm. But the rest of us, we participate. Now, the concern of his majesty when he initiated the Vosellas in 1990 <coughs> was that why are you making this noise instead of you sitting down and then chatting your own future as a country? Mm. If you really believe you've got something to uh, of substance to contribute to national development and to enhance the peace and development of this country, why is it far? Come close and engage to the point that when the, some of these commissions were being said, Members of these formations were appointed to those commissions, including President of Putemo then, Babe Mario Masu. Mm. Many others, Bocheri, uh, Bocheri Kule, uh, Bosombose Makakula, who were very active, by the way, at the time. Bomantla Sachuago. Uh, Bomantla Sachuago. Mm. And uh, whatever they decide, they decide, they, de they, they decide, and what compelled them to decide was. Because we must put the disclaimer in the is, it, That's correct. Yeah. It is oh, it's their own right. They use their right to withdraw, like anybody else is using their right today, not to participate in the elections, not to participate in the inspired dialogue. They are still exercising their right. So those of us who, who participated, I participated in all the Vosellas. Mm. And I was submitting to I was submitting to all of them robustly so without fear of what I believe was correct for the future. And the, and the stability of the politics of this country. To the point that when we won the argument of direct parliamentary elections, I stood for parliamentary elections in 1993 for the first time in my Nkundla at Kubuta. And I was dislodged by the then uh, public relations officer of Usbatle Sinje, Philip Vonyat who was mm. a personal manager uh, at Browaris then. That's the company. Uh, no, no, no. At Unitrans. Mm. He was working for Unitrans. So we, we participated. And as we participated, some of us actually discovered that there is no Berlin Wall mm. politically in this country that is standing against the so-called progressives. Mm. If you engage... If they could accept you, the then they could accept, then okay. they could accept anybody. Mm, okay. Yes. No, no, so fair it point. was not like I, so I did not so, sold anything to <laughs> any, anybody. However, I do want to end uh, my response to this question. Politics, especially multi-party politics, that is exactly what you are advocating for mm -hmm. if you are in a political party. Yes. People have the right, they have the right to choose at any given time of the day or day of the week or a week of the month or month of the year or year of the decade as to how do they want to participate in the politics of their country. Mm -hmm. They also decide with whom do I want to identify myself, not only in terms of political ideology, but also in terms of political organization. So there is no crime. It's the wrong label you put on anybody so say it's a who moved from Putemo to, to another you, political oh, party, and okay. then you label or you brand those as sellouts. Yeah. you just spoken about Tulan Masego. We were just talking about a podcast with Tulan Masego's wife, and he was, she was very unhappy with the way that you have engaged her. And in fact, the state, including the police, has engaged with the, with the death the of family. her husband mm. and all of that. Uh, can you take us into the, conf in the confidence? How far is the um, investigation into the murder of uh, Mr. Tulan Masego? And whether or not you've got some comforting words to a person like like her, who's grieving and who feels that you have been made some unfortunate comments around her. Correct. Uh, I listened to, I followed to that uh, interview did with her. Mm -hmm. uh, she was very, very angry at me to the point that she believes now, after the government statement that was issued, that I was part of those who went to Bunya to assassinate. Uh, for your her information and your information, I don't even know how to hold a gun let alone to release a bullet uh, from the gun. Uh, however, you are also rightly pointing out that a grieving person needs to be handled and treated in a certain way. 
uh, to grieve is something very fragile. Uh, however, that statement stands and it cannot be withdrawn. We really feel as government that uh, Mage Masego was too imposing and assertive to accuse, not because he's a head of state. Anyone, by the, if I were to say to you, no man, Joba actually Mage Masego would podcast on interview when I would say I was part of those who killed her uh, husband. If you say something about a person like that, it cannot be correct. It cannot be correct. We are not only injuring people's characters and assassinating their reputations, we are also offending the law. So that is the perspective and approach that we took. We really fe felt and we do feel that it is too much for anyone to say, uh, so and so killed uh, to learn. For instance, the allegation started like, uh, is government who killed uh, Babi Maseko? That is the song that was sung by the uh, by online newspapers, political formations. Now, who is government? Nobody is government, yet everybody is government. There must be a specific person that was holding a gun, releasing the bullet. Mm. It cannot be government. Mm. So we have to protect that terrain. But it could... It, but, you, you, it could that it is too much for you to say government killed so-and-so. But maybe the context, Mgoni, would be that, one, the government sanctioned it because that's uh, or it's authorities in power, or at least even if they didn't sanction it, they know, but they are just dragging their feet. It is not correct. I believe, honestly, where I'm seated, that government, through the, uh, our, our national security investigative institutions, is genuinely engaged with the investigative process to establish who is or who is behind the killing of Babe uh, Tulane uh, Maseko. Uh, and uh, I, will, I, will, I will quickly point to something very specific. Remember, there are people already who are behind bars. Some are ready to, their cases are ready to start in court so that we can hear. Some of them have met uh, 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 confessions to the effect that yes, we killed the chief in that area. Yes, we shot the soldier in that area. Yes, we shot the two police officers at Mfanyana. The question is, uh, we are hoping that even with the ones that are right now have been apprehended by the, 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 the law enforcing agencies, they, at a stage, there will be enough to give us the information, or at least the leads, that will assist with the investigation of how Babetula and Masego died. So it is not like government is tracking, especially uh, uh, now, Numando, that uh, you have some pockets of the international community and regional uh, communities that have taken interest in the case. Uh, the onus is on us as government to ensure that a, 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 a closure is found in this matter. So you're prioritizing and it. And it's, it's a priority of government. Okay. And it must be found as soon as possible. But so no one is seated back mm. to say, no, we, we are busy with other things uh, we, we, that, that is relegated to the background. It is not so. Yeah. And then uh, just link to that, Tumgoni, is it not uh, coincidental that government has been able to crack these cases that involve people on the other side? There's a case of Babe Mlungi Makanya, whose house was bombed by mm. what people think is military hardware. Mm. Uh, the issue of Tulani Masego and the issue of banning of properties of Bobabe, Maui Kumalo, mm. Gomiayona, Penuel Malinga, Wandile, the many of those. Mm. Those that we can see that to be on the other side. Correct. Why has government not been able to to crack those cases. Now we look at those incidents as incidents that occur to citizens of the country. We don't look at them as people who are on the other side. <coughs> so I wouldn't really say uh, there is no breakthrough because there are people who come from the other side. Like I'm coming back to you, to, I say to you, how do you know if part of the suspects that are behind bars now are not responsible even to, uh, 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 to some of those uh, incidents that we are uh, that we are quoting, <coughs> whatever process and whatever time it takes, it doesn't give anyone the right or uh, the privilege to allege against anyone about anything. 
Because once you allege, then you have put yourself in a position where you must prove mm. what you are alleging. Now, if the question is, you are alleging that so-and-so sanctioned this, or so-and-so have done that, why are you seated with that information? Because as you allege, you cannot run away from the responsibility that you must then prove what you are alleging. So government have taken the position that we are not going to begin to cast aspersions and be pointing fingers to people. So we think this is so-and-so. We think, no, this one was done by so-and-so. We have decided that we will allow the, the law enforce, enforcement ag agencies of the country, and we have confidence in them, that they are doing this job professionally. In due course, there will be breakthrough in all these cases you are pointing at. Because that, 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 that environment in that time, there was a huge confusion in the country, of course. For instance, from government side, we even believe that some of this incident were actually orchestrated and executed amongst the members of the formations you are referring to uh, themselves and amongst themselves. <laughs> yes. No, no, no. You can't. You, you, you can't. You, you, you can't is, even. Is it that they're a bit you mischievous? No, you can't. You can't even begin to laugh like it's a mischievous or a far-fetched mm. fact and reality. You saw how they even fought in South Africa over donor funds, yes. uh, over policy directions. It, it, it was a mess amongst themselves. Did so, you look at so, that so, and with admiration that it's no, now it crumbling? No. Uh, we are now no, going... No, we knew it would crumble at some point because... Anything that is built on court lines, it will crumble at some point. For instance, if you are saying you are pursuing political goals and objectives and you get hooked up with uh, ladies and money in your groups, you will end up fighting uh, amongst yourself uh, for that. So that which not, is what happened. Is that not the state had maybe intelligence trying to... The man tensions. Well, I'm not in the intelligence. <laughs> you I don't know. The intelligence. I wouldn't know. But yeah. What I know is what is known by you. Yeah, and what was seen and witnessed by you and everybody else. Yeah. And then just on that one, are you pursuing some people in? I know the South African is working closely with you to track aspects from both ends. You give South African their suspects they are looking for, including the AKA one. Are you looking at some people that you want to extradite and bring them to the country that you are accusing for them of crimes? No, there are people who ran away in this country after having committed offence. They are known. They don't. They don't like it. The former MP of Kofane in Macau House, Milan, who is fighting there in London, where he has recently obtained the passport for refugee. And uh, he knows he ran away when the, the law in this country was looking for him to take the court and answer for an allegation. However, in as far as have we made some extradition application specifically because I think that is what you are asking. Mm -hmm. No, I don't think we are there yet. Uh, members of Parliament Senate yesterday actually asked the Minister of Foreign Affairs about the same question. Uh, how we, are there any prospects that we are it's engaging really in terms of extradition and so on and so forth? The, uh, maybe the investigations that are ongoing may at some point lead to a stage where government will have to take that decision. But in, uh, in as far as uh, what I know in this office, we don't have any case that we have been... Uh, yeah, just to conclude that part, Ngoni, there's the issue of these extra military or security personnel from South Africa, they call them, we've, we've created a name for them in social media. But what's the relationship in what terms of law enforcement? Yes, <laughs> I prefer not to go that far. You say who alleges must prove. Mm. So, um, <clears throat> so... Is how are they working in terms of the law and also mm. conflict with the state uh, security agencies like the police? Yeah. They seem to be draining some money from the state and also how are they engaged? Is it open and you not know, just clarity around them? Oh, my position um, is uh, government uh, press. We are disseminating information that we are taking away. We don't like on security issues. So that remains a security matter. And uh, I think if you are really passionate to know about uh, what's happening about it, the security processes have their own communication structure. You can engage in the violations and so we can let them fit into the area of the information they can assist you. But from where I'm sitting, we don't know if you are not free. True. Yeah. The and then this hot one, I'm going to the two ones, I think are important before I let you go. The issue of the university has alarmed the country. Correct. And uh, what is this government, well, government treating it with the uh, agency? Yes. Is, uh, oh, uh, yes. Are you, what, what, what measures oh, the president? Oh, yes. In fact, uh, in fact, if the prime minister was in the country today, 
creating heavenly to our sons on cool a trust for that has been uh, appointed and put together by the Minister of Education. Uh, this task force is going to be in the terms of reference that we are going to be appointed today. However, it cannot stop within the absence of the substantive uh, Prime Minister. So immediately comes back, the Minister of uh, uh, Education will present the task force to the Prime Minister and the Cabinet together with the relevant reference, reference, references and then take the process forward. We believe strongly from where we are that this is the mechanism that will assist us to convert a lack and permanent solution to the crisis organization. But are you also looking at overhauling the whole institution in terms of the content it provides, also in terms of the infrastructure itself, or are just investigating what is the problem? Yes, that is the purpose of the task force. Okay. They will tell us all about that. What are the challenges of the university? What needs to be done? in terms of capacitating itself, uh, uh, the institution, in terms of funding the institution, and in, ter- in, in, in terms of easing, uh, probably relooking into the curricula of the university as mm-hmm. well. So we believe it, it, it's a task force that is going to uh, really involve uh, people with academic matters, okay. uh, and we believe they will come up with uh, uh, on the health in Guni, there's been alarm in the country, the mismanagement of funds, and the whole drug shortage problem in the report has come. Are you going to be prosecuting people? And also, there's some people, I mean, I'll specific names because they have been mentioned in the press already. Mr. Ashraf, that is seemingly seemed to have contributed to the challenges in the health sector, but government seems to be protecting him. Are we going to be seeing any stand action taken against all the people who have not done anything correct. I don't want to indulge on what uh, certain specific uh, individuals which are being mentioned by the media, the FBI, the Congress. As government, uh, and I've said this before many times, we don't have anything tangible yet in our hands which uh, implicates some of the people who are today uh, the topic of anxiety, the family, 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 the family. We are waiting for the proper investigations and announcements and the charge. When people are found to have committed crime, they must be charged. Yes. That's when you can say, hey, as a woman, you have done this. But when there's no appetite to No, there to... is appetite in this case. There is huge appetite in this case. For instance, you were asking me even about the disciplinary. Where, where, where is the disciplinary process? Mm, for those in employees, the employees indicated. The disciplinary process is ongoing. What has told it for a moment is that they went to court, mm. not only to challenge the, the allegations levels against them, but also the procedure of uh, uh, the, the disciplinary process against them. So this is law, this is human beings we are dealing with, this is reality. I know that this country, uh, from all corners of the in today, there is pressure. Uh, people want to see people working for corruption. But unfortunately, this is a legal process. You don't work with emotion. Uh, you can't say just because we uh, are mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And people must be aware. Government is sick and tired of paying either out of court settlement of people mm-hmm. who have been wrongly accused, wrongly arrested, and, 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 and so on and so forth. So the, 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 the Department of Public Education is very alive to the fact that there is no need to continue to waste government limited resources on paying people whom we have not given ourselves enough time to investigate in order to establish a clear case of conviction before you go to court with the And it's really comforting to know that you are pursuing this matter. But also, the other thing that people have been complaining about is the Anti Corruption Commission are paying a lot of money to those staff. We're not seeing anyone with so much corruption we are seeing and we are. Okay, hearing about but the anti corruption unit has become just a lab, a laptop. It's not able to prosecute. And what are they, what is being done to give the teeth? So they had had challenges mm-hmm. in the previous administration. Right. And how are those challenges being sorted out? No one can run away from that question the media right defending spending out there yet. Some uh, structural mm-hmm. and uh, even the uh, the, the challenges mm-hmm. in the past. Uh, especially when there was that kind of uh, either I would say legal comment or something that was mentioned uh, in court, and uh, 
what I can say in a short notion today, and what I do right now, is that His Excellency the Prime Minister of Russia and Romania have really uh, stood up for the decision to ensure that APT does what it wants to establish in the uh, He has even added uh, human resources in terms of the task force that has been announced. Uh, what we have found is that the challenges were there. Uh, some of those challenges were by foreign resources that were brought for us. There was a talk that was probably the need to be met together with the Human Rights Commission and so on and so forth. So all those things are now open. They do defend the mind and they do uh, interfere with so much of mm-hmm. the energies and, and so on and like that. However, right now, we believe very strongly that the APC will pretty very soon make huge announcements in terms of breakthroughs in this case. Uh, we are also aware that right now they are also working under bread. And whilst we are pushing them to do this job and do it quickly, we also want to make sure that we don't put too much pressure to them to the point that they do a half of a job. And you're forced to step and in the court And then we end up <laughs> stepping people out of court yeah. because we have been quickly wanted to send the podcast statement uh, to the public that, yeah, now we are working. Because, because yet, we, yet we are posting the government. Again. Because that's what Maui said in our platform uh, in the podcast. He says he has been running. Uh, MP Lobambaro, yes, Lobambaro, yes, Lobambaro, yes, Lobambaro. Like he says that we make the same face that some of them have really been used as in a political fight. Yeah. And they've been running to court for so many years, which the case has not been concluded. Yeah. What confidence do they have that their case will be either concluded or at least the whole stigma around them can be? No, it's very unfortunate when you have somebody with a pending case because it doesn't do either start or conclude. Mm. I agree uh, with the Honorable Member of Parliament of Lebanon. And that these are the things uh, the Prime Minister is also trying to impress. To the judiciary, uh, that you you need to protect the briefing. In the past, they've been they used to complain that there are not enough judicial instructions to do work on these cases. But government have done a very good job in the past two, two years. Judges were employed, uh, judicial officers are still coming in, uh, the chief justice is really affected in that respect. However, these cases must come to an end. It's very difficult, like you say. Uh, that particular case we are talking has been lingering on, on and on and on and on and on. And uh, this is somebody's life. Mm. You know, you need to know at some point if you are guilty and you are guilty or what, and take the responsibility of that thing than to be sick in a silence. Mm. Like and would I also, I have to say this, the young people of this country, they are frustrated. They are, they are hungry, they don't have jobs, they don't have hope, they don't have scholarships. And they continuously see their lives deteriorating. If someone is listening today, what's the government plan for these young people who have lost hope, who don't have any form of uh, living allowance from the government, who have seen their lives deteriorate, and there is no social economic plan to uplift them? What's the plan to deal with poverty? Yeah, that's, that's true. Uh, and uh, it's important also to yes. it's important also to. Take note that uh, the challenge of unemployment that we are coming to young people are not only unique to Swazi. They are universal. Almost in every country is contending with the, with the same. You, you know, statistics and figures in our, some of our neighboring countries is alarming. However, in our situation, uh, when His Excellency announced his grand plan for the next five years, which is going to happen very soon, uh, he will come out very strongly on what measures have been put in place by this government. In terms of mitigating the issues of scholarship, there is already a process that is unlocking that challenge to make money through the banks available for uh, our young people to go and learn at school in, in, in the state of uh, making them to do them at the, uh, the Ministry of uh, mm. Uh, uh, social uh, 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 for, for, for scholarship. And uh, also, uh, the question of providing at least a certain grant for those who have not made it to college and have not found a job uh, also is in the agenda of this excellency. Uh, uh, was it part uh, of the uh, budget? I'm not too sure if it was part of the budget. But so we but, see how serious you are. No, but remember, we have a whole ministry dedicated to you. Mm. Uh, 
allocated for the pending budget every year. So I don't think w once the framework has been canvassed and decided and approved, uh, I don't think uh, financing that particular budget will be a big challenge for that one because money is already there for the most of you. Yes, when we ask our readers, so in the next 30 seconds, very briefly, we ask them to give us questions okay. uh, to ask you. So I'll just ask you to be brief. Okay. Uh, someone asked, he wants to know what is the legislative program for each ministry in the 2024 parliamentary year? What is the common legislative priority? We are still waiting for ministers to provide legislative uh, requirements for the responsibility of their ministry. Okay. Uh, like for instance, uh, we have new programs that have come in, 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 into the play as a result of the people's submission of the play. Some of those submissions did not only require the process, but they also require the process to stand. Mm -hmm. And the government is also happy, hoping to partner with the uh, members of the parliament with the same. Because they are the ones on the ground with the people, and they are the ones uh, with the responsibility to pass legislation that's happening at the second in the parliament. Okay. So it, 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 it's a focus, but specifically to say which ministers submitted in what kind of letter bill, mm. we, we are not at that stage. Yet. Okay. And then how is the rollout of the new performance management system going? Because it was supposed to start from the 1st of April, but in many ministries, personnel has not been trained. Has not been trained. So how will it work? We are still being assured uh, by the Minister of Public Policy that it is still scheduled to be performed. In April, so. the first of April. But how about the personnel has uh, been trained? In fact, I think... Uh, the, 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 the attitude is that let this program start and then we, we, we identify all the gaps which will be good training to both and then we can train as we go mm -hmm. because we are trying to avoid postponing the implementation of this program because it has been uh, lingering on for a long mm -hmm. time okay. yet government is a better tool that can assist in, in the performance of the program. And uh, so the business has been complaining that the long time frame that you pay them. Are you looking at at least giving a, 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 a time frame on when are you going to be paying government, the people who serve this government? Yeah, the Minister of Finance has been talking much about that. You remember even during the short period of mm. members of parliament raised the youth concern. Mm. And you can see that it has been lobbied by the business people that have been given this government. In fact, we have all realized the detrimentality to the business people. Mm -hmm. uh, the business community that was in give service to government and government take time to honor mm -hmm. uh, the mm -hmm. receipts and the payments and all that. We are, we are starting, we are encouraging people on one hand to start business, we are healing them on, on, on the other hand by not giving them the, the life they desire. Mm -hmm. So it is a priority of the Minister of Finance and I'm sure the Minister will make an announcement uh, very soon as to what measures government is taking place. It is a serious challenge. Yeah. And then also, people want to know the resolutions taken at Bayern, are they mm -hmm. available on government website or anywhere? If, if not, why? Uh, they are not yet available on government uh, website. And we have deliberately held them back for two reasons. Uh, reason number one is that, of course, some of them, as I have already indicated earlier on, they require the legislative process. Mm -hmm. Some of them the require resources which have already been provided for. And we are still waiting for the report from Engineering from the National Secretary mm -hmm. of the proceedings of fire because we don't want to splash something <coughs> in the public domain only to find that uh, at the end of the day it conflicts mm -hmm. with some of the content of the report that might have been submitted by the National Secretary. Uh, and he has promised us that we are going the report and then they will get a copy and reconcile it with what we can back as in a government from the various submissions which of course are already available online. Is it going to be before the year end? Or? Definitely. It will be before okay. the end. Uh, some people remember you when you were still with the Melon, with the Sons of Dev and Hans ceremony as you left. Mm -hmm. Do you have any regrets around your leadership there and uh, whether you, in retrospect, you could have done certain things differently? No, I don't have any regrets. <laughs> and uh, looking at things retrospectively, I don't think I can change if I were to be given another opportunity to go into the things there. And I will tell you why. Mm -hmm. This is the reason why. Number one, let me start here. Uh, by the way, uh, we have since settled that matter. 
uh, between myself and the... Uh, and they paid you a lot of money. They did in that one. Really? Yeah, it settled in terms of the intervention that was made by uh, the okay. Bangladesh also. Oh, okay. Uh, but payments have been made. Uh, they are saying, you know, far as they look at it, that is what it is. To but that's just different to the litigation you had with them, right? No, the litigation mm-hmm. never proceeded. Uh, proceeded. Or oh, was it part of the settlement was to find your, each other around this? Moment? Correct. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we did find each other. And uh, the only challenge that happened at the starting of the day, I worked very well. I'm still popular with the local there. You can ask them. They in fact, they want me to come back after my term of office is Okay. So, but the wishes are not with them. They are yeah, with other uh, people, yeah. Yeah. So the challenge that happened today was that I was given a specific mission to go in and come back, uh, which included, of course, taking the step of a certain direction. Uh, unfortunately, my mission was not well explained to the boss by the shareholder or my employer mm-hmm. because I was not employed by the shareholder. I was employed by Tibet and Wang. Then Tibet and Wang deployed me to the shareholder. So it comes with a very specific uh, mission, which unfortunately was not well explained to the boss. Even if I tried to explain some of the reasons why I'm here, what I want to do, and how I want to do it. Uh, I, we, we ran into some misunderstanding, and that caused action, all those actions and restrictions, which uh, unfortunately climbed uh, 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 negatively uh, to that unceremonious separation. And by the way, I was not fired or terminated at that time. Actually, I had a court order which sent me back to office to work. And uh, unfortunately, I found out that my office has been lost. Uh, lost were changed and it's meant to be the security officer. That's how I went home from the top of my job. And then when I'm home, uh, I don't know what they were doing. They did what they did and I was not in the work anymore. Until I decided at some point that no, I need intervention in the security matter. It is the rest that when I approached Bangalore and they intervened in the matter, it's arrested. The only thing that is left now is for us to go into court. Uh, which is myself and the management of uh, uh, TV as to how far we have executed the instructions of this uh, particular. As I'm saying to you, uh, we found each other. Are you happy uh, while we settle? No, no, no. That's I, I told you that part of what we were supposed to do is that it's been settled. However, I still feel that some things okay. have happened there okay. which are not big things, are not causing pressure to anyone about. Okay. Because it can still be done for the Do you feel you were set up for failure though, in terms of the if you're not putting the border to speak around the value of it? No, 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 I don't think I was set up for failure. They they told somebody whom they will go there and do what is to be done, irrespective okay. of the best of compensation from anybody. Okay. They are, you know, the military, the, what is called a uh, special operation. <laughs> <laughs> you go so you're there. on a special <laughs> operation. <laughs> yeah, you go there, you execute them for six months, you move out, and then you get good people and diplomats to come and do their diplomats. Talking of separation, we hear a lot in social media. This is the last question from mm-hmm. me that you are retiring and you are leaving and you are going to be gone very soon. Yeah. Are you really leaving uh, uh, this institution that you're holding? Well, next far as I'm concerned, my leaving or staying is not a problem. Okay. I have I have come to work and I've left to work. Sometimes I left them nicely, sometimes I left them on ceremonial. Yeah. Uh, however, to answer your question directly, my contract for this work was uh, for three years. Okay. Uh, that my third year expired on May 12, 2025. So mm-hmm. I'm still left with one more year in this job. Uh, yes, I'm turning uh, uh, this, this April. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I was not employed you. in terms of uh, mm-hmm. the year and age, but I was employed in terms of my contract. However, as you know, we are not special operation. <laughs> there may be a feeling which I've done, what I need must to come through here. Uh, sometimes they, they redeploy me home. Mm-hmm. So I may be redeployed home. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are no problems about it. Uh, uh, Barangwan has honored me to give me this opportunity to serve here. I think I've done my level best, and I still want to do more because my country and my team need to do even a chance. 
last one, last one, I'm going to find you uh, over here. We'll see this is a nice book, Defending Your Country. It's seeming, you're seemingly established a very good working media team here. You look at the social media, you look at the presence online. How did you manage to assemble this institution uh, that is really able to communicate some messages and all of that? Is it you or if you inherited it? Is it part of your legacy when you leave? It's my legacy. Okay. Uh, without saying those that were yet, it says it must be anything. Okay. But it is talking in terms of the focus that is obvious now. Okay. And it, it's not what I did when I arrived, because when I arrived, I had to. Yeah, oh, yeah, of course, yeah, 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 yeah. Go to the twenty twenty-five. Special uh, operation. That now <laughs> the things are settling down. Uh, we are now establishing a strong communication uh, cadre for government, and I'm sure allowed to stay to the end of my my contract here. Uh, I'll be very proud of the team that is going to be left here, because we will not see something from now going on going forward. This office. Less now. Mm-hmm. Uh, the whole communication is moving to the various okay. and, uh, 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 government departments. We want those cutters of the communication officers there to take charge of the methods of their ministry. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that when you're asking me about finance issues, we don't talk to government officers, mm-hmm. we go directly to some of the rules on the ground. And uh, we are moving very smoothly towards that direction. Having said that, I'm also getting an opportunity to uh, uh, pass my special gratitude and thanks to the chairman of the CSC, mm-hmm. uh, to my principal secretary here, mm-hmm. uh, but at the time, Stuart, a uh, wonderful man, a man who does not want to create impediments for people who want to work. Mm-hmm. And uh, in the recent past month or so, uh, we've been allowed to employ five communication officers, mm-hmm. well qualified. And what that doing in the ministry right now, it makes me laugh and smile. Stay long. Satisfied. Satisfied. Thank you so much, um, I think uh, I can see that you are really getting inspiration from uh, well-to-do public relations uh, people. Thank you for your time and also allowing an institution like the bridge to uh, talk to the government. I am sure with time we will also call us in press conferences and all of that Correct. so that we can Correct. continue to engage uh, and mediate the relationship between the public. Thank you so much.